I remember when I first started trying to learn to code when I was 12 years old and I had this idea that I was going to create games using Visual Basic and yeah I know that was the wrong programming language but I was so fixated on this idea that I would become a games programmer that when I picked up that chunky book tried for a couple of days and didn't have a game come out the other side well I put that book away and didn't pick it up again for another year or two. The problem is in the modern world we're all surrounded by examples of what we could be doing or people that we should be emulating. All these high achieving CEOs or even celebrity developers, we look at their lifestyle, we see what they're achieving and we want to basically have the same thing. It's a bit of a status comparison game that more often than not is going to lead to misery rather than any chance of you able to replicate their success. So what's the alternative? Well the fact is that most self-development advice tells us that we need to set high goals that are going to motivate us. We want to become a senior developer. We want to hit that £100,000 a year salary. We want to create a shiny new startup and sell it for a million dollars. The problem with all of these goals is that even though they can be motivating in the moment, to realistically achieve them it's going to take years and years of daily action. And most times when we set these kind of goals, we're not taking into account our actual preferences and personality. So here's an alternative for software developers who want to be able to pursue their curiosity without following goals that are set by others, but also still feel like we've achieved something in life. Well, since I quit my professional development career four years ago, I've basically been running a series of small experiments and tests to see what I enjoy, what skills I can improve, and what projects I can launch along the way that people might actually find helpful. So to put it into context, I first started a YouTube channel to teach Java developers how to build Java. Then I launched a course on the same topic, then an ebook, and then I started building my own SaaS products. Then I launched a coaching program for developers. And for the whole of that, I've been continuing to make YouTube videos. Now, this might sound like a meandering path, and it kind of is, and that's the point, because the route I'm taking isn't to follow any set prescribed path that a career planner, your parents, or even your close friends might recommend for you. This is all about forging a unique path, learning a set of skills, and launching your own products in a way that feels meaningful to you. And you kind of have to figure this out for yourself. That said, there are three key principles that I've used over the last four years to keep me learning new skills, to keep a roof over my head, and to keep my sanity in a world that constantly tells you that the nine to five is the only way. So the first thing I recommend is to throw away those outcome-based goals and instead focus on input-based goals. So if I was to apply this to my 12 year old self who wanted to make video games, I would tell myself not to obsess over the outcome of having a game, but instead to follow my curiosity about building something using code. Another example I can give you is thinking you want to have a 100,000 subscriber YouTube channel so you can get that silver play button versus exploring the idea of just sharing your interests online through video and see whether you like that. Or finally, it might be thinking that you want to have that $10,000 a month SaaS product just because that's what some guy called Peter Levels did once upon a time. But if you've never built SaaS before, an input-based goal would be to learn the skills to solve your own problem through software. The problem with a goal that's based on an output is that there are just too many variables that are out of your control. Whether the product you create actually has market demand right now or whether your interests you're sharing on YouTube are going to resonate with viewers. But when you focus on inputs, you automatically have more control and that's when you can feel like you're making progress. Progress. So exploring your curiosity sounds great, but isn't that going to lead to you waking up one day wanting to work on one project and waking up the next day and wanting to do something totally different? Well, yes, that's why it's important to channel your curiosity in what I call a sprint. A sprint could be telling yourself you're going to spend half an hour writing code every day for three months. Or it could be learning a particular marketable skill. Or to give an example that I'm doing right now, I'm publishing one YouTube video every day for 10 days. By building some consistency around the action you're taking, by doing it on a regular basis, you'll see whether you actually enjoy that activity and you'll start to see some progress in the actual skills you're learning. For example, that could be a noticeable improvement in your web design skills or understanding any particular programming language at a deeper level. 
by setting yourself a sprint-based challenge like this, you're still really focusing on the inputs rather than the outputs, and you're figuring out if this is something you want to pursue longer term. So my third suggestion here, after you've stopped chasing the output-based goals, and you've given yourself a few sprint challenges to follow your curiosity, is to create projects based on your experience. Now, I'll bet that if you spent 100 days doing anything, you'd probably know more than 99.9% .9 of the population about it. So whether that's a particular programming language, framework, or even industry in which you now have experience, it's time to turn that into a real world project that other people can get value from. So after 13 years Java backend experience, I made a course, an ebook for Java developers. That was my project. And now after six years growing an audience on YouTube, creating over two 200 videos, thumbnail images, and getting slightly less awkward talking to the camera, that's when I decided to launch a coaching program for developers who see the value of growing an audience online. Your project could literally be anything from a SaaS product to an ebook or anything else that people would happily exchange money for. The important thing to remember is that you're still using an experimental approach, testing your theory of what kind of project would work well in the current market given what you know already. Whether it succeeds or fails, it doesn't really matter because you're learning data along the way and what you try next time is way more likely to succeed. So my final thought for you is this. Despite what I've said in this video, a percentage of people are happy following the default path of getting an education, doing a nine to five job and retiring at 65. If that's you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you're the ambitious type who's looking for more meaning in their life, then rather than fixating on some audacious goal that might see you never taking the first step you need to achieve that, consider what you're already naturally curious in, run some small experiments to explore that curiosity and see where it takes you. I'll see you in the next one.